Mabuhay Summoners and welcome back to the Bacchus Pro Gaming Series 2017 Summer Playoffs. Of course, we are currently in for Game 2 of the semifinals between Imperium Pro Team versus Mineski. Of course, before anything else, we'll be introducing ourselves. We are going to be your casters, Arctic Atio Service Fam, and of course, with me is Amplifier. Alright, so we saw in the earlier game that Mineski are... Well, I've, I've been saying this over and over, no? but I've been saying that Bago talaga yung Mineski na nakita natin ever since they came back from the Rift Rivals. No? So, uh, again, it's a story of redemption, I think, for both teams because, like I've said before, Mineski and IPT, we, they're kind of household names for people who follow the PGS, ah, yes. but they don't, or rather, yeah, they don't look as good as they used to. No? So, there's a lot of things that are uh, left to be desired from both teams, but we saw that Mineski pretty pretty much dominated in yeah. the game that we just saw. So for today, we're going to have, again, it's going to be a best of five series. The semifinals to find out who will face Team Manila Eagles at Rampage 2017. And so far, Mineski, they've already closed out one game and this is their fourth win since yesterday when they fought in the quarterfinals against AEX. So they really have a lot of momentum going for them. And Celestial, uh, as we've mentioned, the new AD carry of Mineski, so much the impact niya. Uh, team uh, to the point that it seems like we're seeing a new Mineski coming into these playoffs. And that's the beauty of having Celestial on that roster. It's kind of like hitting two birds with one stone yeah. here. Not only do you have a great player, but also that element where he brings no newfound knowledge to the mm. team. And it's really been beneficial to Mineski thus far. Of course, we'll just have to see it transitions to yet another victory heading into game two as we head into the pick and ban. Of course, bans being thrown out right across the board. Sejuani, Galio, and Zach from Mineski and Thresh, Rek'Sai, and Talia for IPT. Oof, so Mineski really kicking the champion pool of Kulit here. Both <laughs> Zack and Sejuani out, and then Elise being taken. And of course, IPT with ban Rek'Sai. So who does that leave Kulit with? We'll have to see. But Elise again being taken here for Mineski. And then that's going to be the bot lane of IPT immediately locked in. So Hayden Shadow going for the Caitlyn and the Braum. And then the final picks are going to be TG going for the Tam Kench again. And then Gragas being taken there for Light. So maybe that will go to the jungle. We'll have to see as a second rotation for bands come in. Lucian taken away here on the side of Mineski and Jace. And then it's going to be two. AD carries banned. So targeting Celestial here. He won't have the Kalista and the Kogma. And since Lucian's not around, maybe we'll see. Oh, wow. Could it be a Varus? I'm loving this draft coming in from Mineski thus far. There's going to be a lot of protection. Just the Shen and the Tom Kenjin itself. You know, it's going to be really hard to take down yeah. such high priority targets such as both Celestial and the Sin uh, Celestial and Exocin on the Syndra. Yeah, so now we're going to see the final lineup here. Nautilus being taken out there on, Ooh. I believe that's going to be Suzaku. So, such a big shift from playing Renekton to some big fat astronaut. He's <laughs> not going to be carrying clearly this game. He's going to be going for the full-on utility for the team. And it's going to be all on Light and Hate to carry this game this time. So it was a bit similar to earlier, but yeah, it's going to be two tanks now in top lane. So not much of a exciting matchup there. It's going to be pretty much a wet noodle fight. It'll be more about the TP plays. And okay. the highlighted match uh, for this game is going to be between Exosyn and Light. So we saw a pretty interesting, uh, what do you call this? We saw a pretty interesting matchup earlier where it was Lucian versus Corky. <laughs> this is something we usually see in bot lane. But Exo, like we said earlier, dating AD carry, uh, bringing in a bot laner over to mid lane and we saw how well he performed Indeed. on that Lucian. Indeed. And look at the GPM between these two players. 1,064 to 731. That's a huge difference. If not, probably the one of the biggest differences in statistics I've seen across the featured matchups that we've had thus far mm. in the playoffs. Yeah, and I mean, because Light, I think his peak uh, of performance in the mid lane was probably around two splits ago mm. or two or three splits ago. But ever since then, his carry performance that we usually know him for uh, hasn't really come out. I don't know if it's because of the sudden meta change, but I remember when Azir was still oh, uh, yeah, viable. Light was go. pretty crazy on Azir, and uh, but when Azir disappeared and the mid lane meta sort of shifted towards these uh, wave clear mages, it seems like Light couldn't really find um, his strength in, in that lane. So right now, I don't know exactly what Light is for the team. Is he their main carry? Is it Hate? Uh, is it Suzaku? It seems like their team identity seems to change every game, so it's hard to tell really what kind of identity uh, IPT wants to go for, but it's pretty clear what Mineski wants to go for, uh, especially with bringing Celestial in. It's this, it, clearly, it's really uh, just full-on proactive and aggressive early to mid-game team, even though they go for those late-game compositions. The proactiveness is just always there. 
Yeah, and again, at the end of the day, we'll just have to see, will IPT be able to adapt? Because again, mm. we're, it's like looking at a totally different Mineski right yeah. now. And considering that with these changes, it's kind of hard to kind of study them based off their previous yes. games during the split. Because the way that they've been playing during the split as opposed to playoffs is completely different in mm. such a refreshing manner. Yeah, yeah, very true. I mean, I think the only thing you can probably pick up uh, from Mineski's previous games would be the champion pools, for example, and player tendencies, things like that. Ah, but other than that, yeah, just like you said, we're kind of shocked to see Mineski playing this way. And it really is about IPT adopting because keep in mind, Mineski, they don't plan to adopt. They've been on a winning streak ever since yesterday and they plan to keep going all the way until Rampage. So it's all about IPT formulating some plan to stop them right here. There we go. We'll just have to see as we head into the rift. And there we go, folks. It has come down to this as we head into Game 2 for the semifinals of the Bacchus Pro Gaming Series between Mineski versus IPT. My energy is definitely driven for this game as we find out who will be going up against Ready Team Manila Eagles in the finals during Rampage 2017. Let's go. All right, IPT. Interestingly, four members moving all to mid lane. EXO in a pretty dangerous spot here. Isang hook ka lang. Wala na yan. Ooh, that's scary. This would be pretty scary. There's also Body Slam. 30 seconds until and the trap off. from Hate. Oh, they're moving in. Oh my god. Exo. Exo. Didn't spot that out. Q lands. Hook, though, gets the hook. This is very dangerous. A lot of stuns happening. First blood. Actually going to Shadow, <laughs> though. But still, mission accomplished. Not a bad start for IPT. Yeah, that's a weird, <laughs> that's a weird, that's a really weird uh, champion to, go, to give the kill to. But regardless, uh, that is going to be a kill. I don't know what they'll turn that into. Maybe a couple of extra potions or something. I'm not sure. But that's going to be Minions a kill regardless. Spawned. Now we'll have to see. IPT, maybe that will inspire them a bit <laughs> uh, with that early lead there. But looking at the team compositions. So again, like you said, no, there's a lot of protection here. Uh, going for mainly Celestial probably. Because Kaigu, of course, you have the Stand United plus the Devourer there from TG to keep Celestial yeah. safe. And it looks like they're going to be going for a lot of wave clear and possibly roaming uh, with uh, Shen and the Elise. Meanwhile, for IPT, it looks like it's going to be a siege comp because we have really heavy front lines. You've got the Nautilus, you've got the Braum, and then you've got pretty nice siege coming from both Corky and the Caitlyn. So they really have to keep these team composition strengths and weaknesses in mind. Uh, Mineski will be looking to dominate the early to mid game with this Syndra and this Barris. I love the heavy leash coming in from both Celestial and TG. Definitely uh, great for Hamas because it gives him an earlier transition as far as his rotations. And at the same time, now that I look at the composition that IPT has, because we've been talking about how Mineski has a lot of protection for these main carries in the form of both the Shen and the Tom Kench. What I like about IPT's draft is that if you look at the Nautilus, the Dragon the Brum, three champions that could cause disruption in a way to mm. prevent the protection from happening. You yeah. can't really prevent the Stand United from happening, but we could probably hold off the Devar to an extent. Yeah. And all that C... Oh, oh Celestial! Man, Celestial taking so much damage. We'll be able to survive oh, with this Lither of Health. My. Heal popped up, though. Yeah, that's actually really bad. Varus there getting very low without a heal and having to burn the pot. So let's we'll see if they can sustain through this laning phase. But yeah, like you were mentioning earlier, so much CC on IPT side, and there's so many tools for them, actually. To lock down two very immobile carries. Syndra and Varus really don't have many escape mechanisms. So, if the Nautilus, the Brahm, and the Gragas can find an opening, unlike earlier where it seemed like IPT was having a hard time, maybe this game will see uh, more proactiveness coming from IPT, stack that CC onto the carries. Now that I realize that trade off that happened between the bot lane earlier, which caused Celestia to pop the heal, I actually found that absolutely genius because if you're gonna look at that trade off, PG was only Still, just at level 1, so mm. IPT knew for a fact that he didn't have his Devar up just yet, yeah. so they went full-on ham onto Celestial, so great result overall. But Exocendo taking much, much damage coming in from Light, Ooh. will be able to back away though. Ham is here, but Light is moving back a bit, and we're seeing, man, Mineski really having a hard time with this bot lane. Great range, plus the shield from Braum, and it makes it almost impossible for Celestial to fight back and deal his own damage. Whoa, Flash! Indeed, that's gonna be the Flash Cocoon actually connecting. Hummus Whoa. getting the kill onto Light. That'll be one kill going on to Mineski's pocket. And that's nice, Kulit. A bit too late to the party. That'll be indeed a good kill there coming in for Mineski. 
should help Elise and Sindra to sort of cement a pretty good lead in this early game, which they will need uh, as the game goes on. First Drake gonna be the Ocean Drake. So not as lucky as earlier where it was the Mountain Drake. Meanwhile, top lane, I don't think I need to talk about top lane though. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a battle of the tanks. Just a bunch of tanks waiting for level <laughs> 6. Beating each other down. But yeah. what's really interesting is that... Oh, wait. Oh, Hamas though with the end of Suzaku. A little bit in too deep for comfort though. Oh. Forced to flash away. I'm not sure he'll be able to survive. Go, goes in, will be utilizing that blasting cone. Hamas though, just around the corner. There goes the spidling though. Goes into full spider form. Tries to go for the chase, but here comes Exocent, or rather Light actually. My bad for the response, but no casualties just yet. Man, that propel range is really kind of stupid if you think about it. Like, <laughs> how, why would you allow a champion really to just jump like that? <laughs> better? Oh, bot lane again, Celestial having a bit of a hard time. 10 CS lead for Hate right now in the bot lane. A bit of a different story from earlier where Celestial was actually in the lead during the laning phase. But other than that, uh, all of the lanes seem to be moving just fine. And we'll have to wait to see because a lot of the pressure right now actually very dependent on the junglers. Mm. Uh, it's really all about Hames and Kulit disrupting what is probably going to be even lanes uh, all throughout. I don't really see either of these lanes really dominating each other except for bot lane. So I think bot lane is really where things can swing in uh, uh, one team's favor. Yeah, but speaking of bot lane, what's interesting is that we've been seeing a lot more both of these junglers kind of leaning towards the top to mid mm, side. Yeah. Not really as much emphasis just yet towards the bot side. And technically, I agree with you. You know, if you're going to look at both Celestial on this Varus, Hate on this Caitlyn, if either one of these champions really starts popping in, they could be really get things going for either side. Mm. All depends on how this transition and how these junglers rotate. Man. Whoa, man, so much damage. Being blocked there by... Oh, oh no. Junglers and it's, it's going to be yet another fight. Lit actually doing body slam to block any further attempts. And looks like we'll be exhausting the flash though for the escape. Yeah, Corky going to be forced to back there. And with Exo reaching level 6, there might be uh, either a dragon or bot lane play. So we'll have to see. CS lead still up by 10 here for the bot lane here for SP. Small trade-off here towards top side once again. Yeah, regardless, looks like Kaigo actually going the defensive route, prioritizing the full magic mantle mm. to resist some of the damage out to coming in from Kazaki. He did build a Doran strength along with the Dark Shield boot, so actually very good preemptive move there by Kaigo. Yeah. And we have to look at the big picture now, because guys have said since yesterday, four games in a row na nanara yung Mineski. So when you look at this game, the best of five series, this game, if Mineski wins this and it becomes the 2-0 in the best of five. Mineski might just easily, cleanly 3-0 this entire series in mm -hmm. Rampage. But if IPD can stop the win streak since yesterday, then that might give them just the edge that they need to win the rest of the series from now on. So it can really swing anywhere after this game. And it's really crucial that IPD win this game if they want to stay alive with this best of five series and meet their sister team at Rampage. I agree with you there. I'd actually like that you brought that up because people, again, I've been talking about this time and time again during these different games. You can't underestimate, you can't discount that mindset plays as a factor into yeah. these teams here. Like like you mentioned, if IPT, if they lose out on this game once again, then that's kind of that kind of sets your morale a little yeah. bit of a bar lower. Yeah. So for Mineski, on the other hand, you know, makes them play a little bit more carefully, I'd say, if they lose this game. Mm. But so far, from what I'm seeing, very much equal, playing it safe. Again, this is kind of the scenario where we're seeing the calm before the storm in a way. Yeah, yeah, definitely true. That's the thing about playing series games, para mind games din yan eh. Kasi yeah. it's, also, it's, a, it's about endurance, it's about adaptability, you know, being able to per, uh, adapt as the series goes on. And that's, the, the thing is, the adaptability, the burden of adapting is on IPT. Because they're the one adjusting to a, what seems like a very new team. So Mineski, they're just going to keep doing what they've been doing since yesterday and it's up to IPT to try and stop them. And you know what's tricky here is that, like you mentioned, one of the things that you could look into since, again, Mineski is playing to a whole different beat right now, is to look into even the smaller player habits, mm. try to utilize that. But so far from what I'm seeing, some of the individual weaknesses that Mineski had in the past during the split seem to have been corrected as well as a result of these mm. team changes. So again, 
There's just so much value to adding Celestial here. The two birds with one stone not only have great data, but oh. explosive cast though. TG going for the devour for the protect. <laughs> Looks like this will cancel out any four man collapses coming in from IPT though, as life was very much well within the corner along the corners. Well, well, sobrang worth it nga naman. One alt for one devour. <laughs> and Mineski would happily take that. So Bullet will be going back over to mid lane. And oh, package actually used there, but no one was gonna be there. Meanwhile, Hames and Exo. Invading actually, and I think Suzaku can smell that as they move over. This might be a pincer here. Oh no, Kulit! That is gonna be the ult exhausted right away from Exo, taking a lot of damage though. Kurt just lost his block, but that's not gonna be enough. IPD Suzaku joins the party. Here comes Stan United. Kaigu now within vicinity as well. Light and Ooh. Suzaku trying to run this out. Suzaku goes down to Exo Sen. Light trying to poke, takes down Hamas, and there we go. Looks like. No further casualties just yet, but still, that'll be a one for two, still in favor of Mineski. Yeah, so a nice 600 gold lead at nine minutes in. And looking at the CS EXO, 91 to 66 against Light, who got stunned, still being pushed back here. And EXO really having the time of his time. Exo for the exhaust, though. No, here comes Shadow, is within the vicinity. EXO Sen will be going down, you go. Light gets the vengeance. Yeah, EXO. Bit overconfident there from EXO, not keeping in mind uh, that the support wasn't at bot lane anymore. So, little things like that, and we bring the gold back to even. <laughs> Great proactive move there coming in from Shadow, and if you're gonna look at it, there wasn't any particular vision coming in from Mineski's side mm. that would have allowed Exocent to see that coming. Yeah. So, really good there by IPT. Yeah, very true. So, we'll have to see how the game goes. Celestial behind in CS. So, in terms of what lanes are winning, Yung IPT, nasa kanila yung bot lane, pero sa Mineski, nasa kanila yung mid. So, we'll have to see how that pans out because uh, that puts a lot of pressure now on the bot side. Again, like we said during the pick and ban phase, no one really cares about what's going to happen at top because top lane actually is also just watching mid and bot and looking where they'll go for the stand United, where will they go for the TP. So, it's really all about which lane will they choose to swing in their favor. And I'm really excited to see what they do decide to do. But this dragon hasn't been taken. Oh, wait, no, sorry. The next Drake will be Infernal Drake. And it's going to be up in a minute and 50, which will be very helpful for both of these teams. So I think we'll be seeing a dragon fight in a few. What's so scary here for IPT is that if you're going to look at it, even just the Shen, there's like double the presence in terms of the global potential. Mm. Because not only do you have Stan United, you also have the teleport. Group. Yeah. So there's a lot that IPT needs to deal with in a way as far as responses coming in from Mineski. But then again, like we've seen, in kind of like the four-man gang, if they're the ones that preempt the numbers game themselves first before any responses, then you know, that might be their ticket into securing a win here. Mm. But regardless, we'll just have to see again. Mineski playing this really well, but still very much even for both sides here. Yep, very true. Although... The bot lane lead that IPT had for just a while is actually gone now, as Varus has actually caught up in CS. Meanwhile, a light still kind of struggling in the mid lane, but he does have a 2 1 in his pocket, so that might help him. Small and fight happening once yep, again. Thanks, fighting. Well, that time was a Rift Herald is also up, actually. Oh, we have oh. action towards bot side, those Celestial and Peach. Found in quite the tight place. Hamas will be going in for the response, though. Looks like it is gonna be Shadow that's taking a lot of damage himself. TG is very low as well. Light joins the party. Kulit getting the kill onto Hamas. Continuing the chase though onto Celestial and TG. Looks like they'll have to halt for the meantime. They will be taking down that uh, control ward though, but still, kill onto Hamas in favor by BG. Yeah, quite awkward there because Exo was late. So it was a 3v4 for quite a bit, and that helped them to secure the kill onto Hamez. Actually, some awkward the position of Mineski, eh? because they were forced to walk to the river mm. and got squished between Light and the three members of IPT. So that was really weird for them. And then Suzaku didn't even need to TP. We saw him use it, but actually both of them used their TPs, but neither of them showed up. So I'm not sure what happened there. But Stan United is still available, so that's going to give Mineski a bit of an, uh, an advantage even though they lost the earlier trade that might help once they go for the Infernal Drake. So Mineski 
They should be looking to take this Infernal Drake because they have that top lane advantage on the Sand United. Indeed, tricky indeed. A lot of pressure that Mineski can insert right now until such time that Teleport comes off cooldown for Suzaku. So I think he's a is. little bit more safer. Whistle Void's gonna be played out. Shadow might be in trouble along with Kate. They go for the chase. Hum is continuing. Shadow might be the Ooh. first casual. Cocoon, beautiful connect. Looks like the next casualty will be in the form of Hate. Four man gank coming in from Mineski. Very much successful. No casualties whatsoever. There it is. Just like I said, capitalizing on the Stand United. Suzaku couldn't respond. The only way he can is to push up the top lane, but this should be a free Drake unless Light and Kulhet can pull off a miracle. And that's the tricky part right here because, you know, Suzaku on this model, Ineski knows from a fact that he couldn't push in right away. It looks like Light and Kulhet will try to go for the defense. Yeah, so we'll see. Sieging right now. Suzaku will try to take this top lane. I think he can actually secure it. And this will kind of put Mineski in the dilemma. They're gonna actually have to sacrifice first blood turret for the setup on the Dragon. And IPT can actually take advantage of this also. TP timers will be off for Suzaku in just a bit. If he can take this top lane turret and then Kaigo Kakulet can delay Dragon long enough, they can actually get two objectives Indeed. in a single rotation just by taking the top lane with Dragon. Luckily, Kaigo was able to go for the defense, so although the top turret is substantially Whoa. low, it looks like the Colonel Drake. First Dragon gonna be going to IPT again. It's interesting. So weird. Mineski, they made the play for Dragon but lost it. Agreed. Yeah, so that was a bit weird there. Now Exo will try to do something uh, by tr trying to take this mid lane. Flash burn there onto Light because Hamiz was there as well. So no top lane taken for IPT, but they were able to get the Dragon Shadow. Shadow taking so much though. Continuing the chase. That's gonna be full stacks onto Shadow. Won't be connecting the Stung Lash for the stun. Kate okay, trying to deal some damage onto TG as well. Trying to get the stun up. Prox! But looks like TG will be able to escape the safely. But Kulit just around the corner. Oh, might oh, be looking be for a tower something. dive. Actually, Suzaku has TP up. Oh, actually it goes oh. in. TG goes for the Devar. Takes on the ult coming in from Caitlyn. But looks like Kulit gonna be trying to walk this Ooh. out. For the meantime, as IP goes for the tower take. Yeah, so IPT looking for their own turret. They weren't able to take top. Oh, but Mineski get the Rift Herald. So let's see how they choose to trade this. Mid lane is pushed up. So this might be... Oh, actually, IPT chose to back out. So no turrets taken. And they might just have to sacrifice this mid lane turret. There's the Rift Herald. There you go. We'll see. Yep, this should be a pretty easy. Oh, very nice. So coming in as well. Full squad for Mineski here. We'll be taking down that... First, they'll be taking first turret actually. So good job on Tumineski right here. You can get the right away for that turret advantage. Yeah, so a lot of restraint uh, from both sides actually. We've seen hesitation um, from both teams. We saw Mineski earlier. They had that nice gank at bot lane, but they didn't go for any objective. They actually recalled, giving IPT the dragon. And then Dragon made the bot, uh, rather, IPT made the bot play, didn't go for the turret, and then that gave Mineski the mid lane. So we're actually seeing some pretty weird shot calling indeed I, I wouldn't know if i call them mistakes but we're seeing where one team decides to do something but they don't get an objective and that causes the other team actually to get an objective in i turn. agree that's actually a good point there because the pro that's the interesting thing whenever a team makes the proactive move to try to get something eventually it just kind of goes for a turnaround that grants the other team yeah, the yeah, opportunity yeah, yeah. so Weird enough, but yeah. regardless, still very much on equal footing. Mineski, though, securing that 1,000 gold deficit in comparison to IPT. Yeah, so things looking pretty good for Mineski so far. They did need uh, that pretty nice lead so that Syndra and Varus could scale. They've got a couple of kills, but it's not that big a difference between the two teams just yet. Next Drake is going to be Ocean Drake. And turrets 1-0 to zero, since Mineski was able to secure, but now it's 1-1. to one. As IPT, wow, they're fully pushing this top lane. They might just go for an inner turret as well. Hama is responding. They're going to try and take this bot lane. Yeah, those are two members of Mineski towards the bot side. Pro signaling IPT to just continue the aggression up top. It looks like we'll just have to mm. see. Both Celestial and Hama are on to go. Oh. getting the initiate. That's going to be a ton of damage. Going on to Exos and might be going down. In this case, here comes the Stand United, though. Naturally manages to take down Hate before the chase continues. Kulit, Suzaku, and continuing on Exos and Skates. Oh. Won't be going down to Shadow, though. Kaigu will be backing away. TG going to be joining in for the extra precaution. Light, though, is within the vicinity. So actually, it's going to be one for one, but, Mine uh, but IPT. Oh no, actually it was a completely even trade. Indeed. Both teams got one turret each and also got one for one in kills. Now can Light stop this turret from being taken is the question. Because then it will swing to Mineski's favor. Indeed. 
TP is up for both top laners. We might see a fight here, Light. Oh, goes in on the Celestial. Oh, damage is quite substantial. We'll be backing away, not wanting to overextend his boundaries. Man, for both games so far, Light on this core key has not looked so good. He's behind by a pretty big amount of CS right now. And the two kills haven't really translated to much. So I guess that is to be expected though because Corky does take some time to scale. He usually needs uh, Trinity Force, etc. to start really hurting. But we might see a top lane fight here. And the interesting part here is that if you're going to look at the item transition coming in from Light, Exosan already completing the Morello Comic Con, leaning towards his second item. Light, however, not quite completing just yet because there is that diversity wherein he has Lephage mm. as well as the Hex. The, indeed. Yeah, so we'll have to see Hate. Pushing, just can't seem to secure this, and Hamas is here. Hamas though, gonna be on Hate's case. Ooh. Misses out on the Kundo, but Exodus will be joining the party. I don't think Hate will be able to survive this. Stun's coming in, a lot of damage, Celestial getting the kill. Yikes, so Hate, not the first time I've seen him split pushing and then getting caught, honestly. <laughs> it's not something he, or rather it's one of his weaknesses actually. A tendency to push and then get caught in the lane, and this is gonna cause uh, IPT to try and respond, try and take this turret. Yeah, four-man convergence here. Hamas will be joining the party, as well as Exocet to prevent any further aggression onto this turret here. Yeah, so Mineski able to pick up a kill and then defend the lane. What will IPT do? Baron is up in 10 seconds and Ocean Drake up in 50. Kaigu pushing this lane hard, which will give them a pretty good opening for the Dragon. Yeah, and this is the tricky part right here. Now that, that Shen has the Tiamat onto him, that's a lot more pressure that Mineski can exert right there. And IPT kind of forced into a more responsive position, mm. I'd say. Mm, that's true. The only reliable engage they have is from Suzaku, and we haven't really seen Suzaku engage that well so far in this game. We're looking to see more proactiveness from IPT, but I think they're still hesitant because they don't really have the items uh, or damage coming from either Light nor Hate. So, let's see how IPT will go. Maybe they'll play a bit of a slow game up until the 25 minute mark, but right now, Mineski wants that. <laughs> From what I see here, again, like you mentioned, as far as the carries for IPT, not quite up to par yet to deal with Mineski. But again, like I mentioned, they have three champions that are virtually disruptors that could potentially try to hold out on this game and to grant enough time to both light and hate to build up on optimal items. So the question here though is that, can IPT do so? Because again, by being forced into this responsive position, it grants Minesti all the more opportunity to just get control of the map. Very as well as true. Dragon is up and being contested by both. Hamez in a really weird position right now. Wow, actually, Devour through the wall there and... Will it go to? It's gonna go over to IPT. Will yes. it be a team fight? Looks like they'll no. be backing away for the meantime. Yeah, so that's gonna be Ocean Drake. Uh, Ocean Drake's for each team now. And Kai Gudo pushing up top lane, so this might turn the third score into 3 to 1. Plus the 3k gold lead. What will IPT do? Suzaku, so he doesn't have TP, so he can't respond to this. This is the positive for IPT. Regardless of Mineski having a little bit more control over the game, having those two Drakes, I feel that it'll definitely manifest for them towards later parts of the game. The question here is that whether or not they can stall long enough, because yeah. not only do they need to reach that point, but also they need to allow opportunity for Light and Hate to start building up on items, completing those items, not to mention Trinity Force already completed for Light, so maybe slowly getting there. Yeah, they definitely are gonna hurt a bit more now, and Exo trying to push Suzaku out. Varus also here. Stun land. So now for the party. That's going to be quite the same. Exhaust. Exhaust going to be used onto Suzaku. That's going to be the ult. Connecting onto Suzaku with Whoa. a lot of damage, though. Still, Suzaku very much at half health. Gives enough time for Light to go for the response. Oh. Exocet goes down. Suzaku might be the next casualty here. Double kill for Light. Respect the Trinity Force, boys. That's Light getting his double kill. I think that's the damage he was looking for, for sure. And at 22 minutes Ooh. in, it's now down to a 2,000 gold lead. Just because of that one fight, maybe Light will really start to hurt now. I think IPT must have gained the confidence from that. But to be honest, that was a very questionable play for Mineski. Indeed. Why would you force the CC, all those cooldowns, onto Suzaku? That was very unnecessary. And it cost them uh, two kills onto Light, plus probably this mid lane turret. So, man, that's really going to hurt. Outside. Looks like IPT will be taking full advantage of this. Transitioning towards the top side, though. Gonna be setting up, get some eventual warding towards the side of Nesco. Let's go ahead and check out what happened here. Yeah, so this. I don't know why they did this. Their wave was pushed all the way to their bottom turret. And then the response. Of course this was gonna happen. I don't know why Mineski 
didn't anticipate this, but it was, I don't know, maybe a brain fart or something. I'm not so <laughs> sure, but it really cost them a lot. Now the gold uh, is down to, wow, just around 1,000 gold lead. Uh, it's not even that big anymore. Uh, and Baron is up, so the pressure will start to move to this side. Uh, all of the players will have to keep their lanes in check. TP on both sides and Stan United should be up soon. Perhaps not enough respect in my opinion for Sukaku in this case because if you can look at his itemization, Abyssal Mask already completed. Not to mention, that's basically a lot of damage that's already blocked off from mm. Exocen. Yeah. Not really allowing him to deal off the full damage that he can with the Syndra. Not to mention the fact that he's Zaku already poising himself towards building up towards the Thorn Mill. So that also kind of denies Celestial a portion of his damage as well. So, you know, something Mineski needs to take into account there. Yeah. They're not quite... I mean, if they had a bigger lead, probably. Mm. But since they're n still kind of neck and neck, probably not the best yeah. move to go yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. This Baron fight, though, will definitely cause the game to swing in one's favor. Let's see how they approach it. Most of the Vision, actually, Vision not really leaning to either side right now. Uh, either of the teams will have to set up for this one. Uh, but the top lane is pushing a bit, though. And keep in mind, Kaigu does have the Stan United and Teleport advantage. So Suzaku will have to keep an eye on him. 24 minutes in, and everything is even. Mm. IPT looking to secure their first win in this best of five. Mineski already have their first. And looking to go for a full-on five-win streak since yesterday. Yeah, I mean, IPT, you know, really keeping their cool in this game, I'd say, in comparison to game one. Playing it a little bit more fundamentally logical I'd mm, say mm. and you know as a result it's definitely good for them because again the more time given to light and game oh. build up but here comes the missile void so this might be the initiate coming in from Mineski who lit actually within the vicinity explosive cast to cause that just an eruption that's what I'm talking about right there oh my. looks like Zaku gonna go for the flank though gets the knock up onto Exocent priority trying to take down these carries as much as possible that's gonna be Exocent trying to kite around that's gonna be a lot of chases though Devar coming in from TG light joins the party takes down Exocent it looks like Celeste so might be the next casual of the year. Double kill for Exocen right there, though. This is going to be very tricky. The rest of Mineski trying to back away. Man, oh man. TG triple kill. Actually, for life. That's oh the mistake there. Oh my god. So that is going to be ultimately a three for nothing in favor of IPT. Wow. And this might be the Baron. Will they, though? Look at what that one call cost them. <laughs> this is the second bad call that Mineski has made. The first time it happened was at the bot lane. It gave Light a double kill. The second time it happened, it gave Light a triple kill. If this keeps happening, Light will Whoa, have like... Oh, Hamis oh. taking so much damage. So Kaigo tries to go for the defense. Rappel coming in from Hamis. Tries to save him up. Legendary Light. Man, Kaigo going to try to soak up a lot of the damage, allowing IPT to take this Baron. Oh but my wow, god. I'm actually getting Light and Exocent confused here because whenever I think Quirky, uh, yeah, I think yeah. more Exocent. But then again, I'm starting to remember one of the reasons why I actually enjoyed Light on this Quirky. Yeah. yeah, looking at the replay right now, this was really bad. That was the moment that you saw the ult was not going to land behind the carry. You should have backed out. And this, at this point, it was way too easy for IPT to just respond and sort of squish everyone. This is actually very horrible because Celestial and EXO were pushed way out of the fight and could no longer reach the carries of IPT. Because of the range advantage from both Hate and Light on Corky and Caitlyn, it was just way too easy for IPT to clean up after that horrible mistake. So Mineski... I don't know, that was a very questionable engage. You usually don't use the Abyssal Voyage and then go for the all-in deep into the inner mid turret engage like that. That was high risk. Maybe high reward, but indeed the risk was way too high and it was quite obvious it wasn't going to work the moment we saw the indicator for the Abyssal Voyage not reach Kate in time. Overall, in my opinion, a lot of careless mistakes coming in from an SD that's far in this game that really allows IPT to capitalize, and not to mention the fact that he's kind of recalling, but it looks like IPT continuing the offensive, though. But looks like we'll be backing away, I believe. Yeah. Yes, okay. We're but yeah. Be backing out now. Now that I recall, uh, back when I was actually starting off as a coach here at Garena, uh, we kind of did simulated bans, and we during the simulations, we pretended that one side was Mineski, one side was for IPT, so I was kind of pseudo-drafting for Mineski. And then I remember Light, I remember during that simulation, we banned out the 4 from Light, and suddenly it's all coming back to me now, just how potent Light is <laughs> on this Corki here. So perfect time actually for this Corki to come back into meta, because this is one champion I really know Light itself at. 
And the thing is, oh, wait, Gage here. Oh no. IPT continuing at the turret. Baron advantage just mulling down the turret right here. Pesky just forced into a more responsive position. Completely different from the early game here. Teleport coming in from Kaigu though. Gonna try to help his both teammates defend. That's gonna be the hook connecting on the Kaigu though. Not exactly the most optimal target right there. Explosive gas gonna connect on Celestial. Dealing a lot of damage towards the backline. But Sako gonna be going in. Prioritizing heavy bonus fire on the X's and goes! Down, not yet, right yet though, but we'll be trying to back away. But still, that'll sacrifice TG. Gets the hook on to Hamid, though. Gonna be going for the rebel. Double kill for Light right there. Two members of Mineski's squad down. Hamid running away. Celestial Nexus and gonna try to hard to defend. Gets the damage on to Light. Still no takedown just yet. Continuing defensive hit. Taking down Celestial. Wow. Zaku getting the hook on to Light. Nexus and goes down. Double kill for. Flexible, actually. Oh, because of the turret. But still, this might actually be the game, though. Hum is the only one to defend. Oh, I don't think he can defend this, though. EG up in a bit, though. Oh, I don't man. think he'll be able to finish it. Ooh, <laughs> actually goes down to the turret, though. But yeah, this still halt IPT temporarily, but wow, still very much in favor of Imperium. Yeah, Ghost and just after that, reaching the 30-minute mark and things swing so heavily into IPT's favor. Looking at the replay, you have to watch where the carries are in this team fight. It's very important because Suzaku and Light, really great job to isolate Exo and then kill him immediately on the onset of the fight. After that, there's no follow-up. The follow-up to that three-man taunt that uh, Mineski was able to pull off was supposed to be Exo, but he was dead. So there was no longer any damage to support that. And Celestial, at this point, may have already fallen off. His damage is no longer enough to secure that many kills in fact, the only one dealing real damage here are the turrets, but uh, that doesn't even count. So at this point, it's kind of getting scary for Mineski because Syndra and Varus are obviously having a hard time reaching IPT. Indeed. But IPT, it looks like it's easier for them because Suzaku just has to land a nice hook and then Light and Hate can easily reach them with their range advantage. So things are looking pretty scary for Mineski now. And you know, I can't really blame Mineski for their positioning because technically in a sense, it's actually IPT that's setting up the mm. positioning, the mispositioning for Mineski. Again, it's because of the kit of what composition they have. The Nautilus, yeah. the Gragas, to an extent, even the Braum. It's because of these disruptors here which allows them to separate Exocent from the rest of the squad. So again, really good draft here by IPT. I'm actually quite a fan. 6,000 gold lead, 31 minutes in, knocking on Mineski's door now. And look, they secure their first win. We'll see if they can finalize it. Baron buff already worn off. Yeah, that's and a lot of pressure CG. towards the bot side though. Here comes the knockup. Oh. Connecting onto CG won't do anything significant just yet though. But still, IPT continuing to maul. Actually losing out on Baron now. So, it kind of halts a little bit of the pressure a bit for Mineski. Yeah, things are gonna slow down now at this point. Double Ocean Drake and Inferno to help IPT go. Let's see if they can push in. Bot lane though, no inhibitor and it's pushing. So one member from Mineski will either have to go down or they'll have to fight here. Indeed, there you go, IPT continuing to take down this turret right here. Down it goes. Another turret for IPT. Will they continue on this inhibitor though? Still, tricky part is they don't have the Baron. Looks like we'll be playing it a little bit more safer though. Kaigu towards the bot side. Gonna be defending whatever aggression comes from that super minion wave pushing. Continuing hate, getting in a few pokes onto that inhibitor. Takes a lot of damage though from Exocen. We'll have to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, Kaigu actually defending the bot lane. So this will be a uh, Vanessa splitting up. Because they have to defend that bot lane. Yeah, indeed. They're IPT just kind of waiting out for this wave. The pop up coming in from mid lane. Looking for that window of opportunity to ultimately take down this inhibitor. Oh. We'll be seeing a fight, though. That's a lot of aggression on the TC force to cross thick skin. Right low on Hamas. Well, Hamas within the back line. Here comes the Stan United coming in from Geico. This is going to be the fight. Will this be the last one, though? We'll just have to see. There we go. Knock up going in on to Exocent. No follow up damage, though. Pulit taking a lot of damage. Oh. Goes down to Exocent. That's it. It's going to be one for one thus far. Both junglers are down. That's going to be the bar coming in from TG to save Exocent right there. It looks like Shadow continuing the aggression. Looking to see more. More targets taken down. Looks like they'll be converging on the inhibitor instead. Exocent, whoa! Almost goes down though, but still mission accomplished for IPT. And inhib another inhibitor turned down. Yeah, so there's gonna be two inhibs. It was a really Ooh. long, 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 long fight. But we see Celestial and Exo still continuously having a hard time putting down the damage onto IPT's carries. And now it's gonna be the next Drake. Let's take a look at that replay. Oh. <laughs> okay, never mind. Yeah, that was a, too much action, actually. <laughs> I was 
Cloud Drake. Drake. Okay, so Baron is actually live now, and all of the turrets pushing, or rather, all the waves pushing in IPT's favor. We'll have to see. Vision is being set up by TG, but it will probably be easily removed when IPT moves in. <laughs> TP and Stan United. Nope, no Stan United, actually. It's just going to be TP for Kaigu. But where will he TP is the question. All right, there's the replay. So we're actually seeing them pushing in. Hamez trying to make the flank and then the Stan United to get that taunt. But it doesn't really happen the best way. So that's just at the back line, and he's forced to reach only Kulit. All the damage is going onto him, and Exo gets knocked into a weird place because of this cast. So he tries to deal the damage, but he doesn't have enough. He can't reach the carries that well because there's so much frontline from Gragas, from Nautilus, from Braum to defend all that damage. And Exo, he, there's so much hesitation because he knows if he moves even a little bit in, all that CC is going to go onto him. I like the creative idea coming in from Meski going for that flank. It's just that again, the follow-up is so hard with these three disruptors on the side of IPT. It looks like we'll be seeing yet another fight. IPT trying to go for the initiate. Oh, and that's a lot of damage oh, going out oh, to Celestial. Oh. Goes down to Suzaku. This might be the last fight of the game, ladies and gents. Kaigu gonna be converged on by three members of IPT, continuing the chase. I don't think Kaigu will be able to survive this. Hill. Goes down to hate. Rampage is Wow. Quite happy, actually, Rampage. Yeah. <laughs> Rampage 2017, ladies and gents. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. looking at the team <laughs> compositions, I think the hardest part is that Mineski doesn't have an assassin to reach the back line. IPT has the perfect composition to block all the frontline damage from Syndra and Varus. So without an assassin that can reach hate or light, then the three tanks of IPT will just absorb all the damage Indeed. and Mineski's carries will just die. This will be the last stand though. IPT going very hard on this Nexus here. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be heading in one for one. Congratulations, Imperium Pro Team taking game two. All right, so it looks like this is going to be a pretty, might be a pretty long series in this best of five as IPT secure their first win in the semifinals. So IPT look better, but the issue still, I think, is that a lot of the leads that IPT got weren't because they made proactive plays. It was because Mineski made a lot of weird calls in this game. They made two crucial calls that went completely wrong for them, especially, uh, I believe that was in the mid lane uh, where the team fight went wrong. So Mineski, yes, they're much more aggressive, they're much more proactive, but the decision making doesn't always hit. Sometimes it misses, so that's a one worry there. And maybe that's one opening that IPT can take advantage of. Maybe a playstyle that they can use is to go for not necessarily purely reactive, but maybe sort of set up an environment where Mineski will be tempted to make the wrong call. And then IPT can use that to bounce back and then take the game. Indeed. Overall, let's go ahead and look at the damage output here, though. Still, I'd say, look at a lot of damage coming in from Exusen, but then again, I feel like most of this damage is put onto tanks, tanks. as opposed to the crucial carries that you yes. need to be taking down there. Yes, yes, definitely true. Uh, w that's the really important thing to point out about the team composition. You had a Syndra and a Varus who could deal damage, yes, but once the 5v5 started, all that damage was just going to be going over to the three fat tanks that IPT had. Meanwhile, the two carries who had such long range, plus the CC from those three tanks, could easily, as we saw, lock down Exo and uh, Celestial. So. I'm interested to see what team composition they'll build next because, again, still there's a worry on what jungler Skullit can play uh, and what Suzaku will use. Will he use a carry? Will he use a tank? Lots of different stuff to think about and looking forward to Game 3. So there you have it, folks. Game 2 going on to Imperium Pro Team. But when we come back, we'll be heading into Game 3. Of course, this is once again the semifinals for the Bacchus Pro Gaming Series Summer 2017 Playoff. We have been your casters. Arctic Atio, Service Fan, of course. With me is Amplifier. We'll be right back. Light. It is going to be Shadow that's taking a lot of damage from TG. Break it low as well. Light joins the party. Kulit getting the kill onto Havis. Continuing the chase though onto Celestial and TG. Looks like they'll have to all for the in trouble along with K. They go for the chase. Havis continuing. Shadow might be the Ooh. first catch. Kukun, beautiful connect. Looks like the next catch will be in the form of a four man get. Coming in from Mineski. Very much successful. No casualties. Out to it. On there it is. Oh. getting the initiate. That's going to be a ton of damage. Going on to Exos and might be going down. In this case, here comes the standing. Though. Actually manages to take down him. Before the chase continues, to 
from there, Suzaku and continuing on XSN Space. Oh. Won't be going down to Shadow though. It's trying to rule. Still, Suzaku very much at half health. Gives it up time for Light to go for the response. Oh. XSN goes down. Celestial might be the next casualty here. Double kill for Light. The explosive cast to cause that just the eruption. That's what I'm talking about right there. Oh my. Looks like Suzaku gonna go for the flank though. Gets the knock on onto XSN. Priority trying to take down these carries as much as possible. That's gonna be XSN trying to kite around. That's gonna be a lot of chases though. Devar coming in from TG. Light joins the party. Takes down Exocet. It looks like Celestial might be the next casual of the year. Double kill for Exocet right there, though. It is going to be very tricky. The rest of Kineski trying to back away. Man, oh man. TG triple kill. Actually, for Light. That's oh the mistake there. God. So that is going to be different from the yeah. early game here. Teleport coming in from Kaigu, though. Going to try to help his both teammates defend. That's going to be the hook connecting on the Kaigu, though. Not exactly the most optimal target right there. Explosive Cast going to connect on Celestial. Dealing a lot of damage towards the back line. But Sadako going to be going in. Prioritizing Kev only fire on the back percent. Goes! No, not yet, not yet though, but she will be trying to back away, but still, that'll sacrifice Keezy. Gets the hook on to Hamid, though, gonna be going for the look up. Double kill for life right there, two members of Mineski's squad down. Hamid running away, Celestial and Exorcine gonna try to hard to defend. Gets the damage on to Light, still no takedown just yet. Continuing defensive hit, taking down Celestial. Wow, Zaku getting the hook on to Light. Exorcine goes down, double kill for Celestial. Oh, because of the dirt. Oh, we've seen a fight, so that's a lot of aggression on the force to cross. Takes it in, quite low on time. Hamid. Well, Hamid within the back line. Here comes the Stan United coming in from Geiso. This is going to be the fight. Will this be the last one, though? We'll just have to see. There we go, knock up, going in on to Exocet. No, follow up damage, though. Kalit taking a lot of damage. Whoa. Goes down to Exocet. That's it's going to be one for one thus far. Both jumpers are down. That's going to be the bar coming in for people to save. Exocet right there. It looks like Shadow continuing the aggression, looking to see more targets taken down. It looks like going for a lot of This does that again. The follow up is so hard. With these three, this is up first on the side of IDP. It looks like we'll Again, another fight. IPT trying to go for the initiate. Oh, and that's a lot of damage oh, going on. The Celestial goes down to Suzaku. This might be the last fight of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Kaigu going to be converged on by three members of IPT. Continuing the chase. I don't think Kaigu will be able to survive this. Goes go down to hate. That's Rampage IPT will just absorb all the damage. And Vinesky's carries will just die. This will be the last round, though. I could be going very hard on this Nexus here. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be heading in one for one. Congratulations, Imperium Pro Team, taking game two. All right, so it looks like this is going to be a pretty 